greetings. Today we're going to talk about the difference between perfect pitch and relative pitch. It has been said that perfect pitch is taking your accordion and throwing it into the garbage can from across the room. Oh, I know, I've offended all the accordion players out there. Sorry, sorry, you have my condolences for your choice of instrument. Um, at any rate, um, perfect pitch versus relative pitch. What is that all about? Perfect pitch is the ability, which I do not have, by the way. A very small portion of the population actually has it. And if you do have perfect pitch, you can actually still benefit from training in relative pitch. But perfect pitch is where, what's that note? Personally, I don't know. I just jabbed something. Let me see. Oh, it was a G. I had to look. I don't know. On the other hand, relative pitch is this. Ba. I know that that's one or do. Do do so so la la so. I'm able to sing and I know what's do. Okay. Perfect pitch is actually. I believe the science is that in the temporal lobes there are hexagonal structures or octagonal perhaps structures that allow the person to perceive the pitch. Some people have it as synesthesia where they see colors when the note is played. Some people just know that that is the note. A fellow once explained to me that for him perfect pitch was just like when you say cat and everybody knows what a cat is. For him, it was just, that's an E flat. He just knows it. Relative pitch, which 99% of people in the world don't have perfect pitch, but can develop relative pitch, is actually much more important. Sorry, people with perfect pitch, but relative pitch pertains to most music nowadays. And here's what I mean. Every song is in a key. Now, it might be a major key, it might be a minor key, it might shift keys, it might have bizarre tonalities within that key, but every song has a center. Uh, it's referred to as do, or jazzers and rock guys refer to it as, a, as one. I guess country guys do two. Um, I guess country guys do as well, refer to as one. Uh, Relative pitch is the ability to hear the melody and harmony as related to that tonal center, that do, that one. Relative pitch allows you to hear the notes in relationship, hence the name relative, to the tonal center of the piece. And since every song ever written anywhere by anyone, and when I say that, it's an exaggeration because there are some 12-tone pieces that have no center of pitch, but that's not in today's discussion. Parentheses finished. The way that most songs that you will relate to in your life work is it's written in some key. E, uh, F sharp minor, C sharp major be demolished. No, I'm kidding. But there is some key that that song is in. And if you have relative pitch, you have the ability to hear the melody and all of the notes in their relationship to one. We're going to start an ear training series. We're going to start with Ear Training 101. And we're going to shape your relative pitch. And even if you have perfect pitch, this is useful to you. I have known mm, a fistful of people in my life with perfect pitch, and of course they are incredible musicians. To, to them, music is like a fish in water. It's just their element. However, most of them, more than half of them, had a lot of trouble with music theory had a lot of trouble understanding what chord or uh, what key something was in. There was this old fella. He was in his 70s when I knew him. He used to play in all the old big bands, like the, uh, the Basie Band and such. And I'd say, hey, Tom, what key do you want to play this in? He says, I don't know keys. Just what's the first note? And I would give him the first note, and boom, he would play. And of course, he was masterful. But relative pitch, the ability to understand a key in regards to the key center of do, the ability to find one, the ability to hear all the notes and chords in relationship to the one, relative to the one, the center, is vastly important and it actually helps 
even people with perfect pitch. Now, don't get me wrong. People with perfect pitch have a vast advantage. To them, transcribing is not an act of, it's not an act of will. Let's put it that way. It's just something that flows. I know a guy who you used to be able to sit on the piano, and he would tell you every single note that you just sat on. Now, that is amazing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something useful. I'm talking about something day-to-day -day that you will be able to use to be able to discern what key a song is in. And as you join us through the uh, Ear Training 101 and also 102 series, you will build your ability to have relative pitch and your ability to find what key you are in, a sense of tonality. That sense of tonality is vitally important to being a musician. Okay, I'll see you in the Ear Training series. Good luck.